Aita Calaccio. Baio, sweet, 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 sweet is Princess Silka. with many many chapters my atakalacha today let's find out but yes this is video number two of the playlist of my atakalacha today and i will continue from her previous video here i am super soft and smooth princess Ilka. funny yes when i can very much indeed i have excellent sense of humor oh you have no idea how much absolutely Mine is starving for me. Yeah, he is reciprocated. It is mutual. I keep my vision open all the time. When I engage with anything, I am open. I have the rare capacity of observing things and without judgment. And then I said, yes, I judge, but no, I don't. Let me explain it. Yes, it is the first time. Ooh, world premiere! <laughs> See, that fuss they make on TV is completely idiotic. Bam, 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 bam! Come and see! Incredible! Unique! Sensational! Don't miss it! Last ticket! We are running out of time! See what I'm saying? On TV, they have to tell you, or wherever that is today, I don't know where, where online community you look, they have to tell you what's good and what's not, and what you have to be desiring and what you don't. Such a fuss, I don't need it. By the way, before I continue, now I'm on a loop, on an outer loop. When you see that companies need to make large advertising for you consuming, you know, food or beverages, I don't think it's any good. Why would there so much need that advertisement? Yikes me out when I see the fast food chains advertising you the packages they offer. Okay, let's go back. See, now you want me to contain that in my head. Where was I? Where was I? Okay, I tell you. So, for the first time, I tell you what it means to judge and not judge. In my mind, I did not judge. I didn't have any phrases. I didn't have any clear intellectual statement intellectual in terms of there's words and there's sentence to be done there is a rook to be written a rook to a book to be written no it's the opposite i looked how it felt and it never felt right i left it that way because i open up the possibilities in many ways even when i look intellectually when i look i can open up the possibilities so as i was depicting my friend waltraud in the previous video well, my intellectuality might say, well, she's just a negative fart. But since I am observing with openness, I keep up the possibility that could be other things. And that brought things into perspective. Because the other thing what happened is, as I said, she was therapying herself. She needed just to say it again and again. She needed someone to acknowledge her pain. So I serve service as a therapist. And yes, it sounded like negative fart. But on the other hand, well, there was something which was needed for her to liberate herself. And that means I observe without judging, because I didn't place a judgment on her. I can just tell you why I particularly felt uncomfortable and unwelcome. So much negativity. Yet, look, she remained my friend. All the time, as I could. Now that I look into the stories, I can make intellectual judgments. I can tell you this and that, and that is what the Aitagalacho is all about. What am I doing here? 
I look into events, I analyze them, and I give you perspectives. Several multifold perspectives. That is the base of enlightenment. Yeah, like my stepmother, which I thought was my mother. I did not understand the word bitch at the time. Not in English, not in any other language. I didn't thought it was bitch. But can I say she was an evil mean bitch? Maybe know what we know. Yes, she kicked me out. And I so concluded. It felt horrible. You have no clue what a crisis I lived through. But even before I was exited from the house. When I was 14, when I was 15, in the beginning of 16, I was in a huge crisis with all the mistreatment I received from her, my evil stepmother and her boyfriend. He was never a stepdaddy because he never acted like a father or a daddy. So at the time, eventually, when I was out, I concluded, well, whatever that is, I had an intellectual conclusion about it and got peace for myself. And that is the issue. I got peace with the subject. I got peace. And that is what you can learn from me. To enhance yourself and find peace for yourself. Okay, let's continue. Large A. I said, well, you want to know? By the way, you want to know? <laughs> Otherwise, why? I excused her in a way because I thought she was too uneducated and un yeah, lack of wisdom and knowledge to understand her situation. That's what I was doing. From one extreme to the other, she had to still find her balance, so she didn't know how to handle. I excused her in a way. Of course, I did not excuse the gruesome act. But in a way, looking from her perspective, I excused it because I thought she didn't know better. So that made me feel better at the time. And now, B, she had it all planned out. Well, but I have no time to actually burst out in anger, fear, tears, or uh, runs of... Uh, I don't even know how to call it, I forgot. Because there's no point. That means I expected better. And honestly, I never did. She made me see, ever since I was maybe a baby, that I was nothing to her and that I had nothing to expect. You get angry with people because you expect them to behave in a certain way. I get upset because, of course, they should expect to themselves to, be, to behave in a certain way. And they didn't. So it's upsetting because now their little asshole behavior, their laziness and looking, their anger, pain, fear, is now in detriment pushed and on other people. And when it's me, well, onto me. It's upsetting because it's not unregulated. It's outrageous and, and unacceptable to behave this way. You want to talk about the gay dude, for example. I talked about him, what, yesterday or the day before? Oh, I saw him again after the videos. He is angry and upset. Because Presta, <laughs> Presta, he lends his, you know, his poop hole for other gay dudes to have, you know, ejaculations in. That's, is that disgusting to you? <laughs> because it is to us. <laughs> Definitely. And he delusioned himself that he was loved? Is he stupid? Do you get my point? He is not happy. He is not joyful. Because if he would be loved, and if he would love, if he would love, he would be happy and smooth and sweet. Because when you are happy and love, you are smooth and sweet. You cannot fathom to be other than smooth and sweet. But he is everything. He's anger and he is violence. He is brutality in which he treats me like I'm a shit. Of course, I'm a woman, right? They have to be despised. I don't know what other issues he's got on his brains. He always finds a reason to diminish. Whatever I hear in his tone of voices, I'm playing you, shit princess. That's what he's saying. I'm playing you. What he's doing is he's playing himself. Pulling out, you know, a dishonest insincerity act from which I want nothing to do with him. And he needs me now to play in his little pertaining selfish 
round of randomness. Get it? He needs me in his game. And the game is only so servicing to hide his anger, because underlying his tone of voice is hatred. Absolutely. He wants to overplay it, maybe even to himself. Because if he would look, I hope she's gonna fry. He will fry, but I hope he's fried for a long time. Because if he would look, he would understand that I am not the culprit of his medieval acts. I'm not the one pointing the finger, go be gay now. <laughs> it's his own choice, why? Because he's pissed and he's needy too. These narcissists, they're all needy. Do you get it? They always need something special for themselves. Oh yes, the very first time, of course, as long as we gang up against another woman, he was, he was game. As the entire store was ganging up the sweetie, right? And the sweetie was drowning right there. Screaming for help. Screaming, love me, love me, to the workers. And then to someone else, I guess. I'm not 100% sure if that was the other one who went in. I didn't notice. Could have been. Yeah, even the other piss fart is good enough for sweetie. When she's alone. Now she gave herself, and she got herself in a line. That I noticed later. Get it? Now, gay dude? Oh, we gang up against that? Cool, his game. Yeah, but it's against, remember? Homosexuals, men, gays? They always need to fart on others. That's a farting situation, what they have going on. And now, why? See, that gay thing doesn't work out. Because he's being used and abused and he offers. He's not happy, that is my point. In love, you cannot fathom not to be other than sweet and gentle and kind. And he is full of anger and hatred. And mistreats me now. Why? <laughs> because he can't help himself. He has to mistreat everybody. The premise of enlightenment is that you understand that people might have their reasons or non-reasons or being unreasonably stupid and whatever they did to you. But this is independent from who you are. Get my point? Yeah, whether my stepmother had it all planned out or was too infantile, too immature to understand her life, or maybe both of it, it's still her. It doesn't depict who am I. And that is the liberty for anybody to choose when and once you keep your mind open. Of course, lack of love and ruptures of love is traumatizing. It's so painful. But it is the responsibility of you to get over it. No one else will do it for you. It's a choice. Now, the gay dude, he doesn't want to get over his traumas. He wants to live it out intensely. Because he is on a rant of being aggressive and violent. He is charging them for it, for something what he received once. He's charging, se les está cobrando. Like he wants to engage in violence with me, which he already did now a few times. He is being violent to the man who he allows to abuse him. And which he thinks he has the overhand, delusional, of something where he's just a whore. But in his narrative of, yeah, the current <laughs> retardic, <laughs> Rhetoric, but retarding because it's retard. They have to pay for his pain. So it's okay to abuse them. It's okay to be dishonest. It's okay to manipulate them around. That's what he thinks. It's okay to mistreat princess. Yeah, man. The mouth is not being fed by whom you despise overtly very long or soon <laughs> anymore. So that's why he's a lazy shit. Because he could get over his trauma and be a better person. But that's not what his aim is, can you not see it? He once declared war and he didn't give up on it. What's gonna happen now? More war? Or is it turning to arse licking? Either way, doesn't work. They don't bend, they're hard as metal. And I constantly, in my life, I bend it. I bend myself around the circumstance. 
Because, well, I cannot change them. I cannot change those. And my friend Baltrad, she brought me to the Teposteco, I think. I went with her, little mountain, one hour, strain, yeah, strenuous climb up to a little remaining parts of one, once, what once was a pyramid. No, free of charge. Yeah, tourists too, but what is tourists? People from, from, from around the neighborhood or from Mexico City, yeah, that too. So we would go once a week. She called me for that, let's go. I need to go, but she didn't say, I'd like to spend the day with you. <laughs> I miss you, Zulke. No, she would say, I need some exercise. <laughs> it's all about herself, Pisces. And I love to go up. I went also without her. When she went back to Austria, I continue going. So we would go up and now she is like, you yeah, know, 23 years older than I am <laughs> or so. I mean, like the age of my mother and she talks to me like a grandmother. Oh, I'm not in form. I'm not in shape today. Oh, she would whine and complain. And she in her slim body would strenuously walk up so fast that I could barely keep up. Remember, she had been doing it for a while and I was just new to the town. New in town and new to the mountain, I had to still get being trained. Every time, and I wondered why is she always complaining? She's doing so right. Get my dress, what is her idea of life? Well, like she said to me, Zilke, she said, the train comes and you just ride, jump on, on it. You're on the train. Boom. And I, she said, I look and say, oh, what just happened? The train left. I missed it. That's how I am, she said. And that's how you are. Precisely. Why? What is her aim? See, in enlightenment, you cannot blame other people. You can acknowledge that other people influenced your well-being or the lack thereof. Absolutely, yes, you should. You should make very clear what you like and what you absolutely dislike and abhor. Yet you must independentize yourself from the other people. So giving out a different narrative, a different reasons why things could or should or not or what it had and did and maybe not happened is perhaps a little help, it's a little aid. Because everybody and others who bring war to earth justify themselves that they have the right, they claim themselves better and dignified to harm other people. They have not worked their traumas. They outleash their angst onto others, their pain, their fear, their shame, their guilt. I understand? Yeah, in the hand of, for example, the gated, he is in pain and fear and shame and guilt. And he wants to diminish other people instead of addressing it himself. Do you get it? People who are not responsible for themselves or not want to be responsible and hence war. Especially all those narcissists. And my friend Waltraud, she was in pain still, she was mistreated. Yet perhaps she was also ashamed because maybe she understood she could have left earlier and not endure the hardship her ex-husband gave her. He was a womanizer in front of her. I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I, I cannot say. But she was educated in very many senses. Maybe she thought that she could have done better. And particularly, I think she was angry with him and wanted to charge him. She wanted to charge him for him having mistreated her. Because she had the exit, she had a boyfriend after her separation. 
and she was pregnant and she loved that boyfriend or liked him. He was in love with her. He wanted everything with her. Marry her, have the child, accepted her daughter. And Valtrot went on a rant, left him, got an abortion, claimed for the rest of her life that she shouldn't have done it and that now it was the doctor's fault. Just so she did all that, just so her ex-husband had to continue paying. See, in a way she was angry with him, which of course she had the right. And then she got sick. And then she overcame the illness. Then she was left half breathless. And he had to pay for it. And that is not a way God can work. And it didn't help her either. She smelled bad. She had bad breath. Because she wasn't honest, straightforward. And she kind of almost never called me. She had to go up the mountain. Because maybe my presence was too harmful to her. Because I'm honest and sincere. These are little examples of narratives people pose themselves. Whether you do or you do not understand. And precisely. Also to understand that you might not understand everything. Or just conclude they're just shit. <laughs> That's it. I don't measure myself in terms of other people. I cannot measure myself in terms of how other people treat or mistreat me. That doesn't determine who I am. That doesn't indicate or dignifies my being here or my worth or not. And so shall you. You measure yourself in terms of how much I like your presence. How close are you to God? You can be close then to yourself. Hit it.